I know what you've been through. I know, understand your situation. And Jesus says the same thing to us. I know what you did. I know why you did it. I understood what you went through and I still forgive you. Listen, some people got this much information and won't forgive you. God got the whole story and he'll still have mercy upon your soul. City of Billerica, Georgia. I'm Pastor Richard Dobbs, pastor of Overcomers Christian Center. It, it gives me great pleasure to and welcome you today to another time for us sharing the Word of God. We're in the series on power to forgive sins. We finished up la uh, the other time on power to forgive. We dealt with the scribes and religious leaders of that day, and, and the scribes were people who were versed in the sacred writings, yet they had some twisted thinking about Jesus because they, they asked the question, Jesus asked them the question, why do you think evil about what I'm doing? And Jesus gives us guidance how we should respond to the scribes of that day. In Luke 20, 46, 40, Luke 20, 46 through 47, Jesus says, beware of the scribes who decide to go around in long robes, love greetings in the marketplaces, the best seats in the synagogues, and the best places at feasts, who devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. They will receive greater condemnation. Well, today I want to talk to you from this particular topic, coming from Matthew chapter 9, verse 5 through 7, that I might know. That I might know. Let's look at Matthew chapter 9, verse 5 through 7, then we're going to pray. Notice what it says, for which is easy to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. And he arose and departed to his house. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for the opportunity to share your rich word. We pray, Father, as we dig deeper into your word, you'll open up the scriptures so we may receive what the Spirit of God is saying unto us. Father, we pray, God, for the people that are watching. We ask you to bless them, Father. We ask you to empower and equip them, strengthen them, Father, so they can turn, fulfill the will of God for their lives. Thank you for allowing us just to share the good news of Jesus with your precious people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And thank you, Lord. I want to give you a little context by going into the script reading, uh, Matthew chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. So he got into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own city. Then behold, they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. And at once some of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemes. Verse 4, but Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. And he arose and departed to his house. You know, I like what Jesus said here in verse Verse uh, five, for which is easier to say your sins are forgiven you or to say arise and walk. Interesting there that he asked the question, what is easier? What's easier? Your sins are forgiven you to rise up and walk. Oh, you notice how Jesus, he didn't let that, uh, what they said about him to get him off course. Then he arose and departed and went to his house in verse seven. Jesus is an individual who understands people better than we do. That's why we got to be mature enough in God to remain on track despite who opposes us publicly or privately. We have to know who we're serving during times of celebration and times of tribulation. That's why Jesus said, which is easier, which is without great effort to say your sins are forgiven you or to say arise and walk. And let me say this to you. Jesus got power to do both. 
Jesus can ask, can forgive a person of sin because really the one you're sinning against is God anyway. So if anybody can say forgive sins, it's going to be God. And then he's got the power to heal your body, to heal your mind, to heal what you've been through. I can imagine the paralytic. Remember, he didn't even say anything at the, so far during the whole time we're reading here. He doesn't say anything. But Jesus has the power to forgive sin, to forgive sin. So Jesus moves on. We ask the question, why? Which question? Which is easier, to forgive sin or to arise and walk? Interesting because it was evident the paralytic on the bed was bound and confined to a certain place outwardly. But since Jesus dealt with forgiveness of sins, it's possible that he was bound and confined inwardly. And so Jesus heals, he delivers, he protects, and he prospers the whole man, body, soul, and spirit. What am I saying there, Pastor Dobbs? See, when, when Jesus said, man, your sins are forgiven you, that healed the inward man. That healed what was going on on the inside of him. Because, listen, only one who knew, who knew exactly what sins he committed was God himself. Only God knows what sins, every sin you committed. And so he's the one who has to forgive you of your sins. We ask God to forgive us, but it's up to God to do the forgiving. And I appreciate God for giving us a sin, for giving us a sin. Because I'm telling you right now, oh, it was up to people. Oh, if it was up to people, some of, they, they would probably forgive certain sins and certain sins they wouldn't forgive based on their standard of what they think is right or wrong. But God is a loving God. Oh, he's a loving God. And when you ask God to forgive you, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What a powerful God we serve. He asked the question, what's easier? What's easier? What's easier? Which and when he asked that question, I'm thinking to myself, God, for you, both of them are easy. But for us, they're impossible. But listen, that, that's ne neither one of us. Yeah, we can forgive people for doing wrong against us, but somebody sins? Oh, we didn't shed no blood for anybody's sin. Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice for each and every one of us. And I appreciate do Jesus doing that. One thing I love about one of my favorite scriptures is this. For that person, I'm paraphrasing it, for that person that did a lot, they got a lot to be forgiven of. And I got a lot to be forgiven of. And I, when I, because when I look at scriptures, when I study the word of God, I realize, oh, oh yeah, I did it. Yeah, I'm guilty. You got the DNA. You got the video proof. Not, no, you got 4K TV on me. He knows exactly what I did, when I did it, and how I did it. He got 4K television on me. He knows, he knows exactly what me. I can't say, hey, that wasn't me. He got the video proof. And, but one thing, when I ask God to forgive me, he'll forgive me. I appreciate that. Jesus heals us, spirit, soul, and body. And so when Jesus, the master teacher, is teaching us, he's letting the people know in, in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 6, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. I like that. He didn't say up in heaven, on earth earth to forgive sins. Arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Oh, glory be to God. See, Jesus understood his, this man's situation. He understood the, the son of man has power to forgive sin. I know what you did. I know what you did, paralytic. I know what you've been through. I know, understand your situation. And Jesus says the same thing to us. I know what you did. I know why you did it. I understood what you went through. And I still forgive you. Listen, some people got this much information and won't forgive you. God got the whole story and he'll still have mercy upon your soul. Thank God for Jesus being a merciful and loving God. And then he goes on to say that I might know that I might un that you may know that you may know that the son of man has power on earth. I like that. He didn't say in heaven, but on earth to forgive sin. And after he forgave his sin, he said, arise, Woo! get up. Get up from what you've been through. Get up out of that situation. Get up. Woo! Take up your bed and go to your house. 
Boy, isn't that a loving God? He won't, listen, not only will he forgive you your sins, he won't leave you in your sins. <laughs> Jesus came to take, to deliver us from our sins. He didn't come to leave you in your sin. He came to deliver you from your sin. Mm, good God Almighty. Boy, there's some good stuff here. And I like it, 9 and verse 7. And he arose and departed and left to go to his house. And I, I like the fact that when he, he left, when he left, he went back to his house. So the people that knew him before he left is not going to be the same. This, the person coming back is not the same person that left. Oh, when well, you have an encounter with Jesus, people may ha have not saw you in a year or two, may not have saw you in 30 days. This, that's not the same person that they met five and seven and eight and eight, eight days ago, 10 days ago, 30 days ago, three years ago. You're not the same person. You are a new creation in Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You are a new person creature in Christ. God has forgiven you. Not only has he forgiven you, he's healed you mentally as well as physically. You are, listen, you're brand new. I know you may look the same on the outside, but on the inside, you are a different person. You are somebody, a new creature in Christ. You are more than a conqueror. You're an overcomer, overcome by the blood of a lamb and the words of our testimony. You pray, you give, you love. You're not the same person that you used to be. I'm sorry, y'all. Let me get back because I, I, I feel myself <laughs> getting excited about what Jesus is doing in our lives. This, therefore, I must speak with confidence and boldness about the power of God to forgive sin. And not only does he forgive sin, but knows how he restored this man, spirit, soul, and body. And God will do the same thing for you. He'll restore you spirit, soul, and body. Listen, God did, did, doesn't just heal your body, but he'll heal your mind. He'll heal your spirit. He'll make you that person he wants for you to be. That I might know that God has the power. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we're so grateful for your word. So grateful for the promises of God, which are yes and amen. Thank you for your power operating in every individual who's listening, who's watching. I pray for them. I pray, Father, that we we'll all know that you got power, God power to forgive sins, power to heal our body. And you're concerned about our spirit, our soul, and our body. And Father, we're not, we're not the same person that we were after our encounter with you, Jesus. We're new creatures in Christ. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Father, I thank you for that new creature. That person that used to be mean and hateful is loving and kind. That person who used to be stingy is a giver now. That person that hated everybody is praying for everybody now. Father, I thank you for these, these beautiful new creatures in Christ. Continue to mature and to grow and to expand themselves in the word of God and the ways of God. And I appreciate and love you, God, for everything you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And thank you, Lord. Thank you so much for allowing us to come into wherever you are to share the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you're ever in the Villaroca area, come join us on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock a.m. We'd love for you to be a part of our service. Well, till next time, remember, without a vision, the people perish.